driving a Porsche GT3 RS. The ultimate Porsche for the road and track. A car, to paraphrase Porsche's own words, that dares you to find your own limits. So certainly, I've not seen the same number of spoilers, turning vanes, and, and, and rear wings on anything outside of a GT class at Le Mans or at the Formula One race at Monaco. So this is obviously a car built for a purpose. A track day car you just walk right into the showroom and buy off the shelf. Four liter engine with 520 horsepower and a lot of assists and driver aids which you can use or not depending on your whim and talent level. And I guess the question is this. I just drove the 911R, which is intended to be sort of the ultimate street performance Porsche. What else do you need? Is the GT3 RS really necessary? Hmm. I'll drive it and decide. The GT3 RS, of course, has the traditional Porsche PDK transmission, which right now I'm driving in the automatic mode, but of course also has a more aggressive sport mode. And of course, since you're driving the car, why not put it into sport mode? We'll press the other button to get the nice exhaust cut out. We'll put it in manual. There we are. That's sort of more of the ticket. Now, obviously, here on public roads, I dare not press some of the other buttons here, which turn off the traction control and leave the car truly in my hands. But let's see what it's like to drive this car. The 911R is a really all-satisfying car because it felt like an old 911, a 1970s or 1980s 911 but with modern chassis dynamics. Right now, this actually feels a bit heavier. Certainly, it's got more sound deadening equipment. That was one of the things that the R took out of this package because it's basically a GT3 RS without some of the sound deadening and some of the uh, other features that uh, you find here on a GT3 RS. Uh, this certainly has a much more luxurious interior and certainly wider, more comfortable seats, which is sort of interesting considering the fact that this is the track day car, uh, not the R. But nevertheless, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, this seems much more akin to what I find in a lot of modern high-performance cars. It's very smooth, very quiet. Even the sound with the exhaust, open exhaust button pushed, not really present in a way certainly that it is in the 911R. So it's a car that probably sounds better to the person on the sidewalk than it does to the driver inside. One thing which is so different in the driving experience of these modern high performance Porsches than it was in the first high-performance Porsches of the 1980s, especially the, the wonderful Porsche Turbos. The fact that this and these other cars deliver their power in a completely, well, not completely, in a generally predictable manner. When you put your foot down, it's right there. You don't have to wait. There's no delay. And especially in this sport mode, the car is there waiting to give you all it has. The downshift chassis blips with a PDK, not quite as satisfying as those programmed into the six-speed manual in the 911R. Instead of the roar of a lion, it feels sort of like the a whale, the puffs of a whale coming through the blowhole. 
not nearly as visceral and aggressive a sound, which is funny in a car which is much more visceral and aggressive in appearance. But that's not to say there isn't performance here, and performance aplenty. Coming through the curves here, the car really responds. It feels much more nervous than the 911R. The 911R somehow feels ah, more planted, even though obviously this is a car that's designed for a much higher level of demand and speed on a track than the 911R. But perhaps that is the source of its nervousness here on a public road at a relatively low speed. I think it finds itself and its security more at track level speeds and, and conditions than here in the public road. Which is uh, one thing that makes me vote in favor once again of the 911R against the GT3 RS. Is all this too much to have for a car you're actually going to drive on the street? Perhaps. Maybe, just maybe, it's the combination of the 911R with the 3 RS seats, but of course done in that beautiful 911R houndstooth check. Although this interior is a great throwback to the Porsche op art interiors of the 1980s and 90s. Uh, my favorite, of course, being the great Porsche interior in the Porsche 928. Um, it's an amazing thing. And the Porsche designers do know how to make a really comfortable environment that has a lot of character. You know when you're sitting in a seat behind the dashboard of a Porsche, you could be nowhere else. I've often said, and I'll say again, I like cars with specific character. And there's a reason why Porsches are so popular and Porsche fanatics are so fanatical. A Porsche does deliver something that no other car does. That's not to say that other cars aren't good. Not to say that other cars might not be better for many things. The Porsche does deliver what it does in its own manner. And I love the color. So if you want my conclusion, to me it's quite obvious. The GT3 RS is a very capable and very dramatic machine. But for my money, it'd be a 911R all day long, every day of the week, hands down. Sorry. So, between the introduction of the 901 in 1963 and the current 992, just how many generations of the 911 have there been? Well, let's see. There's the 901 slash 911, the 930, the G series, 964, 993, 996, 997, 991, do the math, we're going backwards, 992. So we would say nine generations. What do you think? If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.